Okay. So, now we will see the stacking right, but this circuit if you look into this circuit right, this circuit actually we have brought this magnetizing component and this coal loss component just at the you are at the beginning right, after that we are just for the simplification, but this kind of uh, if you assume this kind of circuit it will give it will not give accurate result, it has result will be your uh, cal calculation will be inaccurate because we have just for the simplification we have made it like this and that is why you have connected here does not matter but uh, just for the sake of understanding and this part we call already told you load resistance. So, these two are added and these two are added and this is the current I to that this is I 1 uh, and this is my V right. So, just let me clear it. So, now if you go to the next circuit here R i is neglected suppose it is not there if it is not there then this is I, I 1 only this is X m and rest remains same right and last one is that your this part is also not there, this part is also not there neglected right. So, it is I starting S is equal to your 1 and this is R 1 right and this is x 1 plus x 2 dash this is R 2 dash and R 2 dash 1 upon s minus 1 s is, s is equal to 1. So, it this part is 0. So, at start this load at start s is equal to 1. So, this part will be 0 right in that case this is your I starting when s is equal to 1. So, this is one approximation it does not give correct result this is another approximation also it may not be in accurate right and this is it, it is also not accurate and this one also at s is equal to 1 right. So, in that case this part is also we have not considered a start this this part is also neglected. So, i s is equal to 1. So, this part is 0 right so, and this is the simple series circuit. So, at the time of starting now s is equal to 1 the load resistance is 0 I told you therefore, the motor current are starting can be as large as 5 to 6 times the full load current because at the at, at, at the start this part is 0 that means ultimately effective impedance is getting reduced because of that starting current is higher because this part is 0 right. So, at start the effective impedance is getting reduced and current is uh, your current is equal to V upon impedance. So, as impedance is getting reduced so current will be higher. So, at start current will be higher right. So, generally in a motor you will find it is 5 to 6 times the full load current that is the starting current right starting current is 5 to 6 times the full load current. So, in comparison the exciting current in the third branch of the circuit model can be neglected at start reducing the circuit to that figure 15 C. So, at the start the third branch is neglected right just for the it is a simplification uh, right. So, now starting torque T start will be 3 by omega s then I start square into your R 2 dash because we have we have uh, this is we have from that expression we have all seen that st starting torque expression, maximum torque expression, torque expression everything. So, it will be 3 upon omega s into I star square into your R 2 dash right. So, basically basically your torque expression we have seen that is your uh, your what you call P your P 3 by omega s P g we have already seen and P g is equal to 3 uh, your I to I, I to square square into R 2 dash upon s, but s is equal to 1 and in this instead of I 2 dash it will be I start. So, that is why T start is equal to 3 upon omega s into I start square into R 2 dash this is equation 44. Uh, now, assuming for simplicity say upper approximation say I f l is equal to full load is equal to I 2 dash f l right just just uh, for the uh, your our assumption right. So, in this case the magnetizing current is suppose the magnetizing current is neglected even under full load condition then full load torque will be T f l will be 3 upon omega s into I f l square into R 2 dash upon S f l same as before use the same torque expression only this only this your what you call this terminology of full load current full load uh, car, your full load current then full load slip just replaced by those things right. So, this is 3 upon omega s into I f l square into R 2 dash upon S into S f l S f l is a slip at full load right. So, a full load means suppose machine is operating say 10 H p machine is there. So, it is operating at that 10 H p 1 H p 746 uh, your watt. So, if it if or you say 10 kilowatt machine for example, and if it operates as 10 kilowatt that is actually your call and corresponding current will be full load current and that is the full load power and corresponding slip will be your full load slip. So, this is 3 by omega s into I f l square into R 2 dash upon S f l right and where S f l is equal to full load slip. Now, if you divide equation 44, uh, 44 divided by 46 right then you will get T starting by T i f l is equal to I star square I starts by I f l whole square into S f l this is a simple relationship right. So, 
with this with this whatever little bit is theory is there at least at least at first year level whatever little bit is there. So, with this induction machine theory part is complete right next we will see few examples. So, hope hope there will be absolutely no problem for you just uh, just try to be basic few things you will keep it in your mind rest little bit of assumption or all these things automatically one after another will come and nothing is actually not, it is not, not at all difficult one right. So, now take the example one suppose a 6 pole induction motor is fed from 50 hertz supply if the frequency of rotary MF at full load is too hard right that is F 2 is equal to S f right find the full load slip and speed. So, P is given 6 uh, F is equal to 50 hertz F is equal to 2 hertz and we know F 2 is equal to S f. So, S is equal to F 2 upon F. So, F 2 is equal to 2 and F is equal to 50. So, slip is 0 0.04 and N s we know is equal to 120 F by P. So, 120 into 50 by 6 so 1000 rpm and S is equal to N s minus N upon N, N, N s right. So, S we have got 0.04 this is 1000. So, we have to find out. So, rotor speed is 960 rpm. So, simple simple example right. Similarly, uh, example to a 3 phase 6 pole 50 hertz induction motor has a slip of 1 percent at no load and 3 percent at full load right. Find now A synchronous speed, B no load speed, C full load speed, D frequency of rotor current at standstill and E frequency of rotor current at full load right. So, when P is equal to 6 no load slip is given that is 0 0.01 full load slip is given 0 0.03 3 percent. So, N s is equal to 120 F by P. So, it is 1000 rpm substitute all these values it is 1 F is equal to 50 hertz and P is equal to 6 poles. So, 1000 rpm do not make it pair right then you will make a mistake here is number of poles right. So, 1000 rpm now no load speed N 0 is how much right. We know that S is equal to N s minus N upon N s. So, here N is equal to N 0 therefore, S 0 is equal to N s minus N 0 upon N s or N 0 is equal to N s into 1 minus S 0. So, S 0 is 0 0.01 that is your no load slip. So, N 0 will be 990 rpm. Now, C is the full load speed. So, N f l you can just replace this suffix 0 by f l. N f l is equal to N s 1 minus S f l is equal to 1000 and S f l is 0 0.03. So, it is coming 970 rpm right. Now, frequency of rotor current at standstill. So, F 2 is equal to how much at standstill if your S is equal to 1. So, naturally rotor frequency uh, current frequency will be 50 hertz because at standstill S is equal to 1 that that means rotor is stationary at that time at when rotor is stationary slip is 1. So, frequency of rotor current at full load F 2 is equal to S F L F. So, at full load rotor S F L is 0 0.03 and this 50. So, it will be 1.5 hertz right. So, example 3. So, a next one is a 6 pole 50 hertz 3 phase induction motor running on full load develops a useful torque of 160 Newton meter when the rotor EMF makes 120 complete cycles per minute right. That means, it is you have to find out you have to find out the rotor frequency from this one. Calculate the sap power output uh, that is your mechanical power I told you right. If the mechanical torque lost mechanical torque lost in friction and that for coal loss is 10 Newton meter compute the copper loss in the rotor windings the input to the motor the efficiency the stator loss is given to be your 800 watt the stator loss is given 800 watt. So, F 2 is equal to S f. So, actually this F 2 is equal to S f is equal to this is given 120 complete cycles per minute. So, rotor frequency 120 by 60 right. So, how many cycles per second actually that is actually 2 hertz cycles per second is hard. So, it is 2 hertz right. Now, S is equal to then 2 upon F because S f is equal to 2. So, S is equal to 2 by 50. So, 4 percent 0 0.04 right. Now, N S is equal to 120 F by P. P is 6 F is 50. So, N S is equal to 1000 rpm. Now, rotor speed N is equal to 1 minus S into N S. So, 1 minus 0 0.04 in 1000. So, 960 rpm. Therefore, omega is equal to 2 pi N by because you need torque. So, omega is required 2 pi N by 60. So, it is coming 100.53 radian per second right. Now, sap power output is equal to useful torque into rotor speed. So, useful torque is given 160 into your rotor speed we got 100 point your this 53 and this you your useful torque here if you see in the problem it is given 160 Newton meter right. Therefore, it is actually 16.085 kilowatt. Now, mechanical power developed is equal to p m is equal to useful torque plus losses into rotor speed. 
So, useful torque is 160 and this loss is, is given 10. So, 160 plus 10 Newton meter into the rotor speed 100.53. So, that is P m is equal to 17.09 kilowatt. Now, next part is P m is equal to you know 3 I 2 dash square R 2 dash into 1 upon S minus 1. This is the mechanical power output. So, 3 I 2 dash square R 2 dash is equal to we can write that is your S P m upon 1 minus S. That means, from this expression that means, from this expression you can write that your S P m upon 1 minus S we are writing and 3 I 2 this one is equal to. So, basically this term is equal to 3 then I 2 dash square into R 2 dash then 1 minus S upon S right. That means, this part is equal to S into P m divided by 1 minus S right. So, that is your rotor couple loss 3 I 2 dash square R 2 dash this is rotor couple loss. The rotor couple loss expression is S P m upon 1 minus S. So, rotor couple loss will be 17.09 then your your that P m is equal to 17.09 S 0 0.04 by 1 minus 0 0.04. So, it is coming 0 0.712 kilowatt. Now, input to the motor, input to the motor is mechanical power output plus the rotor couple loss plus the total stator loss. Total stator loss is given actually 800 watt because in the problem it is given the total stator loss is equal to 800 watt here it is given 800 watt right. So, that means it is converted to kilowatt. So, here it is 17.09 plus 0 0.712 plus 800 watt means 0 0.8 kilowatt if you add 18.602 kilowatt. Therefore, efficiency is output by input. So, output is equal to 16.085 we have seen and input is 18.608. So, it is 86.47 percent the efficiency right. So, understandable. Next is a squirrel cage induction motor has a slip of 4 percent at full load. Its starting current is 5 times the full load current. The stator impedance and magnetizing current may be neglected. We are neglecting it. Calculate the maximum torque and the slip at which it would occur and calculate the starting torque these two things right. Now, we know that your starting current square is equal to V square upon R 2 dash square plus X 2 dash square so, because I start slip is equal to 1. Here no again and again I am not writing those previous equation numbers, but all these things have been given right. Similarly, and this is a start and at full load at I F L square that full load current V square upon R 2 dash upon S F L square plus X 2 dash square because I start slip is equal to 1 here it is written right. Now, equ divide equation 1 by equation 2 if you do so you will get I start square by I start by I F L whole square is equal to this expression right. Therefore, this one is equal to your what you call this for maximum your what you call for maximum uh, your uh, torque right that uh, the, that R 2 dash relationship is R 2 dash is equal to S max into X 2 dash because we know R 2 dash upon X 2 dash equal to S max t. So, R 2 dash is equal to S max t X 2 dash this we know. So, here we are substituting R 2 dash is equal to S max t into X 2 dash here you are sub that is written here in the red ink right here we are substituting. If you substitute and simplify the expression will be like this this equation right. Now, data given that I start is equal to given 5 times full load current starting current is equal to 5 times full load current that will be I start square by I F L square will become 25 then because I start is equal to 5 I F L full load slip is given 0 0.04 right it is given. So, this one is equal to you substitute all you will get this expression here you will get two values of S one may not be feasible, but another is your uh, another is feasible right if you solve this one you will get S max t is equal to 0 0.2 because other value is not feasible right. So, from S and, and you know that torque expression T max is equal to 3 upon omega 0 0.5 V square upon X 2 dash here it is written C equation 37 right here it is written. So, here then that means you will get T full load torque is equal to 3 upon omega S into this expression here it is written from equation 35 right. So, only you have to keep it mind little bit you have to keep it in mind. So, equation 4 divide equation 4 by divide equation 5 if you do so then T max upon T F L will you will get this expression you divide and simplify you will get this expression right. So, T max upon T F L is equal now you substitute R 2 dash is equal to your what you call that S max T into X 2 dash you substitute and simplify you here it is written here again and again that R 2 dash is equal to S max T into X 2 dash here it is written and you substitute if you substitute you will get this expression. Now, that you put S max 2 we got 0 0.2 full load slip we know 0 0.04. So, it is function of slip only and if you simplify it will be 2.6 that means, maximum torque will be 2.6 times the 
full load torque right so maximum torque 2.6 times the full load torque little bit practice is necessary right now from equation 47 we know that t start upon t f l is equal to this one right so i i sorry i i i, I start by i f l is equal to 5 so 5 square s f l is 0 0.04 so starting torque actually is becoming full load torque for this problem right so next is example 5 the power input to a three phase induction motor is 60 kilowatt the stator losses total 1 kilowatt find the total mechanical power developed and the rotor copper losses per phase if the motor is running with a slip of 3 percent right so rotor input is equal to stator input minus stator loss and the beginning of the air gap power at that time i have told you so it will be pg will be 60 minus 1 59 kilowatt and slip is 0 0.03 so, total mechanical power develop PM this expression we have also derived 1 minus S into PG. So, you will get 57.2 kilowatt right. Now, rotor copper loss we have also derived this formula S into PG. So, it is 0 0.03 into 59. So, it is actually your 1770 one, one, watt right this calculation this blue ink you see that 1770 watt right. So, rotor copper loss per phase divide by 3 it will be 590 watt so, simple problem only you have to keep it some formula in your mind right. Next is example 6 a 500 volt three phase induction motor has a stator impedance of this much the equivalent rotor impedance at standstill is the same right the standstill means when slip is equal to 1 the magnetizing current is 36 ampere the coal loss is 1500 watt the mechanical loss is 750 watt estimate the output efficiency and power factor at a slip of 2 percent this is the problem. We have made a simplified circuit we have put this sand branch at the beginning right and these are all these things this is load resistance part this is rotor part this is stator part and this is sand branch part just for the your what you call for simplicity simple calculation right. You can put it in middle here I mean if you want if you want a more accurate uh, calculation then you can put you can put the sand branch is here sand branch is here you can put it but things will be a calculation will be complicated right. So, anyway so here we have uh, uh, for simplification we have made this your what you call circuit like this and this is your load resistance part right just nothing r 2 dash uh, by s has been made it like this r 2 dash plus r 2 dash 1 minus s upon s right. So, the phase voltage is it is given 3 phase voltage phase voltage is 500 by root 3. So, this much of volt 288.7 volt. So, take it as reference 288.7 angle 0 volt. Now, slip is given 0 0.02 and it is given uh, R 1 is equal to R 2 dash 0 0.062 ohm and X 1 is equal to X 2 dash 0.2 ohm from the problem itself. Now, total impedance if you add right. So, it will be uh, you just uh, your what you call you add this to plus this one r 2 dash into 1 minus s upon s right. So, it comes actually 3.1 I mean total impedance of the circuit just you go on adding right. You can make it directly r 2 dash by s instead of this one and this one basically r 2 dash by s, but the way it is drawn here same way I have made it right. So, it is 3.19 angle 7.56 degree ohm right 56 uh, 7.56 degree right. So, angle and it is ohm. So, i 2 dash is equal to v upon z so, this is B, this is Z 90.5 angle minus 7.56 degree right ampere. It is not written here ampere, it is ampere. So, here it is written here right and I therefore, I 2 dash is this is real part, this is imaginary part. Now, I m is equal to V upon J x m. So, V upon x m angle minus 90, but at is given 36 ampere. So, basically I m is equal to minus J 36 ampere right because in the problem it is given, it is given 36 ampere. So, instead of making this directly you can write that I m is equal to minus j 36 ampere. Now, total coal loss is given 1500 watt, coal loss per phase 500 watt. The, therefore, coal loss we can write V into I is equal to 500. So, I I the coal loss component of the current 500 by V. So, 500 by 288 for 7. So, 1.73 ampere. Therefore, I 0 is equal to I I, I plus I m. So, it will be 1.73 minus j 36 ampere right. Therefore, I 1 is equal to I, I 0 plus I 2 dash see the circuit if you add this it will be I 1 is equal to 103.2 angle minus 27.7 degree ampere. Now, power factor will be then cosine of 27.7089 because voltage angle is reference taken 0 and this is the stator current I 1. So, angle between this voltage and current is 27.7. So, power factor is this much 0.89 right. 
Now, rotor coupler, so you know 3 i 2 dash square into r 2 dash. So, 3 this is my i 2 dash square and this is my r 2 dash. So, 1.52 kilowatt right. Load resistance we know r 2 dash into 1 upon s minus 1. So, this much. Now, total mechanical power output will be 3 i 2 dash square into r 2 dash 1 minus s. This all we have developed right. So, is equal to this part is rotor coupler is equal to rotor coupler into 1 minus s upon s. So, rotor coupler just we have calculated 1.52 this is my rotor coupler right. So, this is your then into 1 minus 0 0.02 upon 0 0.02 slip is 0 0.02. So, 74.55 kilowatt right. Now, mechanical loss is equal to 7750 watt it is given mechanical loss is given therefore, net output will be this one minus this one it equal to 73.75 kilowatt right. Now, input is 3 3 phase it is so 3 v i 1 cos phi. So, 3 into 500 by root 3 into 103.2 this i 1 into the power factor 0.89. So, it is coming actually uh, this one into this one just you root 3 root 3 uh, root 3 and this is 3. So, root 3 v this is i and this is cos phi and divide by 1000. So, 10 to the power minus 3. So, it is kilowatt right. So, efficiency will be output by input you just this is output and this is your input. So, it is 0.927 efficiency right. So, just you have to keep it certain thing in mind. Next is example 7 a 25 HP that is horsepower 6 pole 50 hertz slip ring induction motor runs at 960 rpm on full load with a rotor current at 35 amp of 35 ampere allowing 250 watt for the copper loss in the short circuiting gear and 1000 watt for mechanical losses find the resistance per phase of the three phase rotor winding right. So, in this case what we will do? that n s is equal to 120 f by p. So, you will get 1000 r p m right. Slip is s is equal to n s minus n upon n s. So, slip you are getting 4 percent 0 0.04. So, net output is 25 h p 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watt. So, it is 18.65 kilowatt. So, total mechanical output will be then 18.65 plus these two data are given your here it is your here it is uh, 250 watt for the copper loss in the short circuiting gear and 1000 watt for mechanical losses right. So, this is watt divided by 1000. So, I have to convert it to kilowatt right. So, that is 19.9 kilowatt. Now, mechanical output is equal to rotor copper loss into 1 minus s upon s that we have seen. Therefore, rotor copper loss will be s upon 1 minus s into mechanical output. So, this is s is 0 0.04 substitute here mechanical output you substitute here you will get your this one will be 829 watt not uh, this is uh, not 12 829 the blue ink you see the blue ink. So, 0 0.829 kilowatt right. So, here it is actually not this one this blue one right. So, 0 0.829 kilowatt. So, here also it is uh, your point uh, your 829 right minus 250. So, 3 i 2 dash square r 2 dash is equal to 829 minus your what you call 250. So, I mean all this case the blue one right this is you need not consider this is you need not consider right this is you need not consider. So, in this case your what you call that your 3 i 2 dash square r 2 dash will be 8 uh, your 29 minus if you look into the problem if you look into the your what you call problem that your allowing 250 watt for the copper loss right in the short circuiting gear therefore, here your 3 i 2 dash square r 2 will be 829 minus 250 because that you have to make it because that will be your actually rotor copper loss. So, that means 3 into 35 square into r 2 dash is equal to 579 right. Therefore, r 2 dash will be 0 0.158 ohm this blue ink one you will see right this is the correct answer and this 250 you have to subtract because here it is here it is written in the problem allowing 250 watt for the copper loss in the short circuit in gear which is excluded from the resist equivalent uh, sorry resistance of the rotor circuit that is why this has to be you have to be when you solve that solve the numerical this has to be subtracted from this one right. Now, next example the power input to the rotor of a 440 volt 50 hertz 60 pole 6 pole your 3 phase induction motor is 80 kilowatt the rotor EMF your is uh, that your electromotive force is observed to make 100 complete uh, your alternation alternation or uh, your what you call alternation per minute right. That means, it is your what you call rotor frequency that is that you have to find out calculate the slip the rotor speed mechanical power developed the rotor couple loss per phase the rotor resistance per phase if the rotor current is 65 ampere. So, in this case 
solution is equal to it is given s is equal to f t upon f because f t is equal to s f. So, it is f t is equal to 100 by 60 because it is making 100 cycles per minute. So, 100 by 60 cycles per second divided by 50. So, s, s is equal to 0 0.033, 3.3 percent right. N s is equal to 120 f by p. So, it is as usual 1000 rpm uh, putting all this data. N is equal to rotor speed is equal to 1 minus s n s. So, 1 minus 0 0.033 into 1000. So, 960 7 rpm. Now, next is mechanical power developed p m is equal to 1 minus s into p g. So, p m is equal to 80 kilowatt. So, p m is equal to 1 minus 0 0.033 into 80. So, 77.36 kilowatt right. Next is the rotor couple loss per phase. So, per phase that is 1 third into slip into rotor input. So, it is 1 third into slip into 8. So, it will become 880 watt that is 0 0.88 kilowatt right and that and this one is I 2 dash square R 2 dash because per phase. So, 3 is not there it is per phase. So, I 2 dash square R 2 dash is equal to 880 therefore, R 2 dash you will get 0 0.208 ohm very simple problem very simple problem. Now, next is this one right a 3 phase 500 volt 50 hour induction motor with 6 volts develops 20 horsepower at 950 rpm with a power factor of 0 0.86. Total mechanical losses 1 HP that is 1 horsepower calculate for this load the slip the rotor copper loss the your the input if the stator losses total is 1500 watt the line current right this you have to make it. Whenever you will solve all this numerical and other thing you first write down the problem and then you solve it right. Now, we know that N s is equal to 120 f by p. So, 1000 rpm it is coming as usual and s is equal to you know this formula. So, from this you are getting 0 0.05 right. So, total mechanical power developed will be 20 plus this 1 you have to add right e h p. So, 21.1 hp is equal to 0 0.746 kilowatt. So, it is 15.666 kilowatt right. So, p g is equal to rotor input is equal to p m upon 1 minus s this we know. So, put p m put s here you will get 16.5 kilowatt right. Rotor couple loss we know s p g. So, s we know p g we know. So, it will be 0 0.825 kilowatt right. So, because s is equal to 0 0.05 and stator input is equal to p g plus stator losses. So, p g is 16.5 and stator losses 1.5. So, it is 18 kilowatt right and root 3 v i 1 cos phi is equal to 18 kilowatt. So, 18 into 1000. So, that means i 1 is equal to all the data are given. So, it will be 24 ampere right. So, if you look into this problem that your power factor is given 0 0.86 right power factor is given and everything is given and all these things are computed. So, here it is your what to you call that I 1 stator current you will get 24 ampere right and this is your last problem for this last problem for this chapter. So, an 8 volt 50 hertz 3 phase induction motor has an equivalent rotor resistance of 0 0.07 ohm per phase. If its stalling speed is 630 rpm how much resistance must be included per phase to obtain maximum torque at starting ignore magnetizing current right. So, N s is equal to you know 120 f by p. So, in this case it is 8 pole machine right. So, it is coming 750 rpm frequency is 50 hertz. Slip that is the uh, torque for which the slip your what you call slip for which torque is maximum. So, S max t is equal to N s minus N upon N s because this N is actually stalling speed right. Stalling speed means it is the speed for which your torque is maximum right. So, this is 630 rpm. So, in this case your 750 minus 630 upon 750. So, S max t is 0.16 right. Since the torque is maximum that is the stalling torque right. So, R 2 dash upon X 2 dash is equal to S is equal to S max t this we have studied. Therefore, X 2 dash will be equal to R 2 dash upon 0 0.16. So, 0 0.07 by 0 0.16. So, 0 0.44 ohm right. At start S is equal to 1 we know therefore, R 2 dash is equal to X 2 dash is equal to 0 0.44 ohm right. Therefore, this we got resistance to be added 0 0.44 minus 0 0.07. So, 0 0.37 ohm because here it is given that your uh, has an equivalent rotor resistance of 0 0.07 uh, ohm per phase, but we got that your we got 0 0.44, but this 0 0.07 oh has to be subtracted such that it is becoming 0 0.37 ohm. Therefore, then the problem is given how much resistance must be included per phase. So, a 0.37 ohm resistance have to be your what you call has to be in incorporated in, in that right. So, this has to be so otherwise the answer will be wrong 
you have to subtract this right with this with with this i think uh, uh, this indexed machine is I, I have to uh, we have to close it right because it is a first year level so little bit little bit practice is necessary right and uh, i do hope that all of you will under and if you have any problem if you have any sort of problem particularly solving new like new initially perhaps uh, when you will do it for first time maybe you have to give little bit uh, your what you call concentration on it but if you have that any problem anything you please put any sort of thing please put the question in the forum we will clarify all your all your queries right and any doubt any numerical doubt anything you have you please just uh, put it and for that i suggest you take a rep reference book and other things given you follow any book any 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 machine book you will find all these things are there with this thank you very much we will be back again